So one of the things I've always loved about the Chrome DevTools is the fact that you can use your keyboard arrow keys to increment embedded numeric values. So for example, here I have a padding eight, and if I hit up, you can see that the pixel value of this padding property increments, and if I hit the down arrow, you can see it decrements. In fact, if I hold the shift key while doing this, you can see that it increments and decrements by 10 instead of one. Now, I don't have a great use case for this in a normal web application, but I thought it would be something uh, fun to try and recreate using an Angular directive inside of a form control. So that's what I have here. Here's one form control using just a value binding, and then another form control using the ng model binding. And you can see that if I move my cursor towards an embedded numeric value and I hit the up key, that value starts to increment. And if I hit the down key, that value decrements, and if I hold the shift, you can see it increments and decrements by 10 instead of one. And I can do this for all of these numeric values. Oops, that wasn't on numeric value that time. Um, and I can do it for the ng model binding as well. And you can see not only are we incrementing and decrementing the value, we're also updating the selection or the selection start and selection end properties, the input binding, to cover the augmented portion of the string. Now, in typical Angular fashion, we're not actually altering the DOM node itself. Instead, we're calculating a proposed change to the input, emitting it, allowing the calling context to decide whether or not it wants to apply the emitted value, and then updating the selection afterwards. So let's take a look at how this works. So here's my app component. You can see we have our two inputs, one that's using just the value binding and the other input that's using the ng model binding. And we're using this incrementing input attribute selector to hook into the augmented behavior provided by our incrementing input directive. Now the incrementing input directive works by emitting a value change event, which in this case, when we're binding to the value, we can use the box of bananas syntax to implicitly pipe that value change back into the value. With ng-model, however, ng-model doesn't listen for a value change event. So what we have to do is explicitly listen for the value change event and then explicitly pipe that value change event back into the value, in this case, the value being the public property on the app component, not the input value. The ng-model directive will then take care of piping this value back into the uh, DOM state for the input of the form control. So now that we see how we can use incrementing input, let's take a look at how it's working under the hood. So again, it's using this incrementing input attribute selector on inputs. It outputs a value change event. The value change event contains the proposed change of the augmented substring. It doesn't apply it to the DOM directly, right? We're deferring to the calling context to decide whether or not to apply that value change. And then this algorithm, for this directive is broken up essentially into two parts. The first part, which handles the key events and emits the value. And then the second part determines how to update this selection, right? As we increment or decrement, you can see that we select the text. So the second part is that text selection. So let's jump down to the key handler to see how this works. So first we take a look at where the selection start. That's where the beginning of the user's cursor is within the input. We then use a regular expression pattern to scan to the right of the selection start and the left of the selection start until we can no longer find characters that satisfy this regular expression pattern, which is essentially a string of digits potentially preceded by a dash or a negative sign. Once we have that string of characters, that's our selection value, we can then get the strings preceding and succeeding that string, we can increment our selected value, and then we can emit this on that value change event. Now again, we can't change the DOM directly, we're emitting this pending value, and then deferring to the calling context to apply or ignore that change, which means that we have to, at a later point in time, check to see the state of the input to decide whether or not we want to apply a selection start and selection end change. Now we're doing this by actually storing in the state of the directive a pending selection setting, pending value, and then a value snapshot. And this way, in our ng after content check, which runs during the change detection digests, we can check to see if one, we have a pending value, 
and whether or not the value snapshot, that's the snapshot of the value at the time we emitted the event, is different than the current value. If it's different, it means that the calling context has done something to change the view model, which has in turn changed the DOM state. And we can then look at the value of the input, see if it matches the pending value that we had. And if it does, what we can do is assume that the DOM has been changed based on our emitted value. And in that case, we can update the selection start and the selection end of the native form control to use the pending selection start and the pending selection end based on our augmented input. And then of course we can clear out any of our pending values. So it's not the cleanest algorithm. I don't love the fact that I'm binding to the ng after content check, which is essentially just an ng do check in my case, waiting for changes to be applied to the DOM. Um, but I couldn't really figure out a better way to do that without actually changing the form control directly. But again, we don't want to change the form control directly. We want to emit in a value and then allow the calling context to either use or discard said value. So that's, uh, that's what we got here. And uh, this was a lot of fun to write. Again, I don't have a particularly great use case for it in my head for a normal web application, um, but it was a lot of fun to think about how we can uh, use directives to augment inputs, especially the fact that we can use a directive to augment an input that's already being augmented with the ng model directive. So just, uh, I think, a lot of interesting little details here.